What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Waters. Welcome to No Life to Metal. We are doing 1969, dude. So we had a lot. There was a lot yeah, of we stuff. Did. We're, we're, gonna... we're still calling this part of our heart and heavy series, but I mean, I mean a lot of this stuff is going to be what I would call proto metal. There's yeah, and really, even that, I mean, there's, yeah. there's nothing really in here, maybe except for one that I, and even that is stretching it to call it metal. Well, this but, this is the roots of, of heavy, this is the roots heavy of heavy music, metal, yeah. really, yeah. So, so yeah, we're doing our top, what was it, 35 we came up with? 35, and then we got a bunch of uh, honorable mentions, and then a bunch of just mentions, which I'm going to do first. Because so, neither yeah. of us actually, I've got most of this stuff digitally, but neither of us had a physical copy of any of it. Oh, I'm Traog, by the way. Oh, yeah. In case you forgot. Um, so I was just going to mention all the ones I looked up that we didn't have physical copies of. Okay? Go In alphabetical it. order. Uh, we got Ambrose Slade Beginnings, which is the first Slade album when they were still called Ambrose Slade. It's a, an album of covers. Uh, the band, self-titled, David Bowie, Space Oddity, hugely influential album. Uh, Edgar Broughton Band, Wassa Wassa, that's one of those proto nuggets that you run across. Uh, Chicago, the Chicago Transit Authority, that was their first album when they were still called Chicago Transit Authority. Mm -hmm. Coven, uh, Witchcraft Destroys Minds and Reaps Souls, you know, the from Billy Jack, I think, was on there, One Tin Soldier. Uh, the Guess Who had two albums that year, Wheat Filled Soul and Canned Wheat. High Tide had Sea Shanties, definite proto band there. Uh, Janis Joplin, Got Them Old Cosmic Blues Again, Mama. Mm -hmm. The Kinks, Arthur, Love, For Sale, number four. Get Kinks it? are definitely a proto band. Oh yeah, hugely important. They're like proto everything, mm -hmm. proto punk, proto metal. <laughs> Uh, Moody Blues had two albums that year, On the Threshold of a Dream and To Our Children's Children's Children. Rare Earth, Get Ready, Savoy Brown, uh, Roots of Fog Hat and that you think, they, you think they're old enough now that they actually have Children's Children's Children? They probably do. <laughs> <laughs> that, they, that makes them their, in their 70s, their 80s. Yep. Yeah, you're probably right. I, I, it's, it's, a, it's math. I can't do it in my head. Yeah, because that's my, that's my mom's age, so. Okay. So it's like their great-grandchildren. Yep. Right? All right. Where was I? I'm sorry. <laughs> Savoy Brown, Blue Matter, Roots of Fog Hat, and that Yep, definitely. That, that was Fog Hat. Yep. Uh, the Shiver, Walpurgis, that's another um, proto band for sure. Sly and the Family Stone, Stand! Spooky Tooth, Spooky Two. Oh, I probably do have that one. Oh, oh you do? No, oh, I'm Okay. Roots of <laughs> a couple of different bands in that one. Foreigner came out of that band. Uh, what's his face? Dreamweaver. Gary Wright came out of that band. Uh, somebody else, I can't remember off the hand, but Priest covered them. They were they were an interesting band. Yep. Someone I want to explore more. Uh, Status Quo had Spare Parts. That was, and that was they were definitely more of a pop band at that point. They, yeah, they're more they're still coming out of the kind of 60s psychedelia at that point. Uh, Ten Years After had two albums that year: Stonehenge and Shh. Traffic. Uh, Lax, Last Exit. But there wasn't anything. Why did you touch me? It's the name of the. It's the name of the album. Oh. It's four S's and an H. Uh, traffic, last exit. Uh, Vanilla Fudge had two albums that year. Definite proto band there. Near the beginning in rock and roll. Velvet Underground, their self-titled debut. Uh, I believe it was their debut. Was that Carmine Appice? Carmine Appice. Well, Carmine Apice yeah, a piece. was in Vanilla Fudge. I mean, they're brothers. So Vinny Apice was in Dio. I guess they pronounce it different. I guess. Yeah, Carmine's been around forever. Uh, Johnny Winter had two albums. His first two in 69. Johnny Winter and Second Winter. Yeah, that one too. Heavy Blues there. Writing on the Wall, Power of the Picks, another obscure proto band. And Neil Young had his very first solo album, self-titled, in 69. So those are just our mentions that we just didn't have physical copies of which is probably good because there's so many others yeah where they just didn't make the list yeah <laughs> yeah um so next up how do you want to do this well i kind of turned this into a history a little bit of history lesson i guess 69 was a big year Lots it was a big on. year very big year so i had vietnam war if i'm mistaken vietnam war with Viet vietnam vietnam war was still in full swing, full swing yep. the manson murders happened in 69 and this getting onto the musical track Volume two. Yep. Uh, Woodstock happened in '69, which is a hugely influential musical event. Um, I think I saw the movie when I was like 12, 11 or 12 years old on TV, and it stuck with me forever. I mean, it's like 
there's so many classic performances on here crazy and the the festival happened in 69 the soundtrack came out in 70 which is why it didn't make our list otherwise it would have right. made a list but we had to mention Woodstock because yeah. it was probably the sole biggest musical event in 69 I mean it was worldwide really. I would have loved to have seen Jimi Hendrix oh yeah or Mountain too Mountain played that and they were really heavy Mountain was there Credence was there Sly and the Family Stone Crosby Stills Nash and Young The Who uh, Can He Richie Havens opened it at almost Santana's performance was massive, just soul sacrifice live. Can't heat. Yep, can't heat. Butterfield Blues Band. There were a ton of bands. Cosby Stills, National. Yep. yep. Ten years after, Jefferson Airplane, John Sebastian. Sly and the Family Stone, I believe. Yep. Joan Baez. Oh, they're, the only, they're not actually even on the Sha Na Na played Woodstock. Oh, that's right. It's kind of like the last vestiges of the 50s with those guys, and it was kind of cool. Country Joe McDonald, Country Joe and the Fish. Uh, the Slide of Family Stone on that one? Yep. That was an awesome. Yep. That's volume two. That's that's like more performances. It didn't make the first cut. Yeah, it was it was a massive event, three days. Um, I don't know what else to say about it other than it was just a hugely influential musical happening. Yeah. Woodstock. It was also the, the year that Black Sabbath started recording. Yep. They didn't really actually put anything out. But nope, but they were recording their first album they were in 69. Demos, yep, for they, sure. I believe their first album came out in January or February of 70. And then they ended up putting out two albums in 70 as well. They did. All right, first honorable mention, Blogwin Pig. Uh, this is a Jethro Tull spinoff, because Mick Abrams, who played on uh, Jethro Tull's first album, played on this. And great guitar tone. The first time I heard it, I thought I was hearing Tony Iommi play. Great stuff. Um, Definite proto, proto material for sure. We got the pig on the front with the earring in, and we got his tail hanging out the back. Two different covers here. I can't remember which is U.S. and which is U.K. But Blood and Pig. That's just a real quickie. And then we have got. Hold on. Ah, yes, this one didn't make our list. It did, um, and. Actually, I have the black cover too, but we didn't feel like looking for it. So, right. Um, but there's multiple covers. So this is the very the first Genesis album. Very, very different from the UK prog album, prog band that you know, or yep. even even the '80s more poppy stuff that they did. It's very different from that. It's '60s pop. No, yeah, late Six, '60s pop rock. '69 album debut for them. From Genesis to Revelation is the actual title. Yep, from Genesis to Revelation. And there's a couple of reissues here with different titles. And yeah, this one's called with Peter Gabriel and. Yep, that this is their this, earliest stuff. That one called that one's called Revelation. From Genesis to Revelation. Revelation yep. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, I love Genesis. I'm actually wearing a Genesis shirt. You are. Uh, I love Genesis, and any other album would have made my list. But it's not that I don't like it. It's just there's so much good stuff. It was hard to. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely was deserved to be in the honorable mention. Uh, next, we have got the second album from the band Gun. Uh, it's called Gunsight. Definite proto. Proto metal band here. Yeah, there's that's that's hard to get that. I gotta show it at an angle or else it really does blind the yep. viewer. <laughs> uh, second album called Gunsight. Um, didn't really have the the same hit single appeal that the first album did. Race with the Devil was a big single off that first album, and covered by several bands. Priest covered it. Girl School covered it. Um, second album, but definitely good hard proto rock to check out. Gun Gunsight second album. Then we have got the, uh, I don't remember where this falls in their catalog, but it's the James Gang. It's their, is this their first? I don't remember, but it's called Your Album. It's a, I think it's the first James Gang with Joe Walsh and company. Uh, no real hits on this one, other than maybe like Funk 48. The precursor to Funk 49, which was a huge hit for them, but your album, James Gang, definite good guitar stuff going on here for Mr. Walsh. And let's see, we got this one. You want to do this one? Or? What do we got here? Oh, that's good. This is the Doors. I mean, everybody knows who the Doors are. Yeah. Jim Morrison and company, and 
I don't think I, have this, a, I don't think I even have this one on vinyl. Bit of a departure, not on vinyl. I no. just have the CD. That's weird. Me too. I don't know why. <laughs> I've got other uh, Doors. It's, stuff. Honestly, it's not my favorite Doors album. Yeah, it's not mine either, which was probably why I didn't make it yeah. in one of our lists. So. Big hit on this one was "Touch Me." If that tells you anything, very different approach from the Doors. I think uh, probably label pressure was pushing them in a more commercial direction. Yep, very poppy song, but yep. I mean it was still their sound. I mean, it, oh it was, yeah. I mean it was that heavy keyboard drenched. Sound just a bit more accessible. Didn't even have a bass player. No, they never did. Yep. No. I well, think they might have. Album. Third last album they did. Yep. You're right. Uh, another honorable mention debut album from Santana. Like I said, they uh, they played at the Woodstock Festival the same year. Was Neil um, Sean in the band at this point? Oh boy, that's a good question. I I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, Greg Rowley definitely was, yeah, but I'm not... Neil Sean, I don't know if he ever was like officially a member, if he just toured, toured with, with them. Him. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm not sure. I've never really seen You guys seen probably him. know. Let us know if you know. Yeah, did Neil Sean per, uh, appear on any of their official albums? Let me know. I'm not sure. I'm not either. But, but yeah. this definitely has, uh, you know, Evil Ways is on this. Uh, Jingo, Soul Sacrifice, of course. Fried Neck Bones is on this. And a great cover art. Oh, oh awesome I cover art. that cover. And last honorable mention uh, is a definite early prog band from the UK. We got Van de Graaff Generator with the Aerosol Grey Machine. Um, I have a lot of Van de Graaff Generator. I don't have. I that do one. too. This is the debut, and it's. I've listened to it, but I can't say that I can speak on it very at length, just because. Which is why we didn't put it on our list. Yeah, we just wanted to mention it because it was the debut for those guys, and some of the later stuff is I need, I need to find awesome. it, just because I've never, I've never heard it, I've never owned it, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely got that more 60s, 60s flavor to it. Right on. Yeah. So, all right, those are our honorable mentions, so we can now, I believe, oh, there's one more I wanted to mention. Uh, I didn't have it physical, neither did Scott. I got it on digital, but I pulled it up on Wikipedia. And it was uh, 69 album from the Stones. Oh, this right, was yeah. uh, Let It Bleed, which I feel was a pivotal album for them and for rock in general. Yep. I mean, this is the album that had... That's one I wouldn't mind having on vinyl. I just no. don't have it. I have it uh, digitally, and I have like greatest hits albums and stuff with all the songs on it. But this is the one that had Gimme Shelter, signature tune for them. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, title track, Let It Bleed, Midnight Ramblers on here. Uh, can't which always been, get what you want. Which has been can't, Midnight Ramble has been covered by everybody. Yeah, and I, my favorite version is the live one from uh, Get Your Yaya's Out. But it's got Love in Vain, which is a uh, Robert Johnson cover. It's just a really solid album, man. And you can't always get what you want is the closer, which is like, I don't know that it gets much more classic or epic than that. Yep. You know? Pretty cool, but I definitely want to mention that. Uh, Let It Bleed, for sure. Pivotal album for the Stones. So there you go. We're going to call this. Uh, bonus material yeah and then we're going to get right into our top, top 30, 30. So, yep. all right so we'll, we'll just go ahead and cut it here real quick and okay we'll come back with a uh, our top 30. Okay.